the Genesis narrative and uh, what we'll get to here in a minute of how John, the writer of Revelations, uh, uses the Old Testament is there's a lot of intertextuality at play, especially like new to Old Testament or even Old Testament to Old Testament. Yeah. But there's a lot of like, okay, this has gone on before in the scriptures or this story mm -hmm. reflects this story, right? You have, Jesus does this all the time. Yeah. Well, they, I mean. Paralleling himself to Moses. Yeah. What the biblical the authors, a, a lot of what the biblical authors and characters do is they basically, it's a way of ancient world hyperlinking the story that you're reading to another story within the biblical corpus, mm -hmm. right? So um, this idea of intertextuality, it just, it may, what it does is, I mean, when Jesus says, um, I'm trying to think of a good example, um, or, or when the gospel of Mark opens with quotations from the Old Testament, right? Mm -hmm. The gospel writer isn't just thinking, okay, I want them to read this section. The gospel writer is thinking, this, where this section comes from says something important about what's happening right now in the story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's wanting you not to just read those words on the page, but wanting you to know what the words on the, on the page here said on the page they originally came from mm -hmm. and the entire section around it. Um, intertextuality is a wonderful artistic tool and a wonderful tool for building narrative. Yeah, and I think my point with all those examples, be it very specific ones, are in like the music examples and in the film examples is yeah. this happens all the time, not even just in the same movie, but in the same genres yeah, or in the expectations of genres, right? Yeah. Um, the one that we've been talking about is a pretty new one. So I guess spoiler or, but yeah. <laughs> again, it's like made over a billion dollars. So I'm not really worried about spoiling it. Uh, yeah. Spider-Man No Way Home, yeah. right? Like the whole film is intertextuality. Like, oh, absolutely. This is literally what it is all about. So yeah. you, you, have... don't get, you don't get 50% of the jokes if you haven't watched like five other movies at least. Yeah, yeah. And even you could definitely make the whole argument, and this is, would be a very easy argument to make, that all of what the MCU has done over the past 15 years yeah. is a huge practice in, well, elongated storytelling, one, but like yeah. intertextuality, even inside of that, because... Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't see Age of Ultron, then like you don't understand Civil War because yeah. what are the Sokovia Accords? Yeah. Right. And why do they matter? And why are Tony why and are Steve Cap agreeing? And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. what is this whole conflict? Well, you don't get it because you didn't watch the movie before this. So, like, yeah. or not even the movie before this, the one that like feeds into this narrative. Yeah. And like, this is why I get mad when people are like, "Oh, people in are dumb." I'm like, "Have you heard people talk about like the MCU movies? Yeah. Do you like get how?" in they are on like how complex some of this storytelling is going even though this is like mm -hmm. maybe a, to make the point that uh scorsese has been making like this is a theme park it's not necessarily cinema um i don't know if you're familiar with that debate at all yeah it's been uh, happening on like film youtube for a couple years now um yeah. but anyway like the but the point is even in like what could be considered popcorn movies and they very mm -hmm. much are yeah uh they fall in the superhero genre. They fall in the like comic book movie genre. Mm -hmm. They, but they're doing things like this and using what came before it to build this movie. Anyone oh, who watches a TV series knows this, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and what I think is super interesting, and you can use this as an example to make another point about the Bible, is that at this point, if I was to recommend to, I have several friends in the area who haven't really watched much of the MCU at all, right? And so I can't just say, hey, go watch the show Loki. It's really good, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have no idea what's going on. Yeah. And so many times we have that expectation with the Bible, right? Is we just hand someone the Bible and say, okay, like, I mean, obviously you have to start somewhere as a new Christian, right? But we don't help them understand that, there's a complex narrative being woven around even the gospels. Mm -hmm. And, and so we expect them to just be able to pick it up and get it. And we don't really do a good job of educating them about the, we don't do a job, good job of educating ourselves sometimes about the way in which the whole biblical canon informs itself in a cross play, mm -hmm. just like the MCU does. 
Yeah, and even and even wider than that, we'll get back. This will bring us back to the Spider-Man analogy. Yeah, or like example. <clears throat> so you have like uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man that's been happening that happened for two movies prior to No Way Home and the like Spider-Man trilogy that they made within the MCU. So yeah. even here you have an intertextuality of like yeah. MCU at large, Spider-Man, specifically like Tom Holland's incarnation, mm-hmm. I'll use that word, of, yeah. Yeah. of Spider-Man, right? That's yeah. different than mm-hmm. the other Spider-Mans. But yeah, anyway, still, dude, because I rewatched the other two recently because I'm trying to get my roommate. We're going to go see No Way Home again this weekend. Nice. The this is how deep this the end credit. Sorry, I'm gonna like nerd out on these movies for a minute. That's fine. The I end love credit scene in um uh the first one, uh Homecoming. Yeah, which is just think about that title for a second. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's some pretty artistic and clever anyway. Sorry. So yeah, yeah, because yeah, they go to home. Yeah, anyway. Um, God, even that title is intertextual, right? Yeah. Um, as all good titles should be. Um, but you have the end credit scene, spoiler for a movie that's been out for like five years, um, of uh, Michael Keaton's uh, uh, Ultra. What's oh, Adrian Ultra? Dooms. Yeah, I almost said Falcon. I was like, no, that's not right. Um, <laughs> yeah, of him meeting Scorpion from. Yeah. From where? Andrew Garfield's universe. Right? Yeah. So I think, yeah, I don't really even, remember. It's been a minute. So, yeah. But so, like, you have that in the credit scene that like connects the two already. So, yeah. you have Marvel at large, you have Tom Holland Spider Man, but even in the first Tom Holland Spider Man movie, you have like subtweets, let's say, to mm-hmm. other Spider Man properties that have existed years before this. Yeah. From so and there's a big like bureaucratic thing going on here because it's like Sony and Marvel yeah. who owns yeah. Spider-Man and who can do what, but that's a different conversation. Yeah. Um, so you have that going on. And then not only do you have that, but in no way home, you have the coalescence of all this. So you have mm-hmm. MCU at large, this whole storyline that's going on, Tom Holland's you know, what would be three movies in Spider-Man within the MCU, and then you have the introduction of all the other Spider-Mans like intertextually linked to yeah. this Spider-Man now in this universe because there's now you know, like a multiverse, right? Yep. And then, but not only do you have that, you have all the references as we've talked about in the movie, you know what, Peter, I'm somewhat of a scientist myself, to yep. like yep. jokes in this movie that you don't get if you haven't seen Spider-Man 1 that came out in 2001, Yeah. right? Or two, yeah. I think it was one. One um, or two, something like that. And then... Uh, you have all the conversations that the different Spider-Mans have about their powers. And like, mm-hmm. I can joke about like some of the things I didn't think landed, but yeah, like there's that, jo- like this is, and this is how deep it goes. Like there's that joke though, they're on the Statue of Liberty and the new Statue of Liberty with the Captain America shield, which that's a whole another reference there. Um, yeah. Where uh, Maguire and, and uh, Garfield are talking and, uh, Garfield just goes, yeah, but I'm like, I'm, I'm like boring. I'm a bad Spider-Man or something like that. And then mm-hmm. uh, McGuire goes, no, no, you're the amazing Spider-Man. And it's just like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Literally yeah. just a reference to like, yeah, his line of Spider-Man being the main Spider-Man, which is his comic line, which, but yeah. it's also a movie like series. Yeah. So point is you have the iceberg essentially of yeah. like Marvel, MCU, Tom Holland, Spider-Man his Spider-Man trilogy that interlinks to like the other Spider-Man films, but those are the Spider-Man films also linked to like the comic book movies. And even if you watch like the Spider-Man series animated from the nineties, yeah, there's a whole Mysterio storyline that is literally uh, far from home. Yeah. 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 The, the whole end. So what's super interesting is the way in which, all of that ties together and like it takes someone who's really really knowledgeable about that topic in order to make all of those connections and me being like a super big nerd who's loved spider-man since i was six sitting in the theaters 
watching this, I'm having the time of my life. And yeah, some of the jokes don't land, you know, whatever. There are some critiques of the movie. We can, yeah, we but, can debate the movie but, another time. But, yeah, but, example. Ul- but ultimately, like it's it's something that because I've been engrossed in this, mm-hmm. it's amazing. And what then happened, like and just to take it back to the subject that we we start with, like it it's the same thing with the Bible. Right. And I'm, one of the reasons I think we misinterpret the book of Revelation, for example, so often in our culture, and I know you're going to get into this in a little yeah. while, yeah, yeah. is we don't know the Bible well enough to recognize when John's not saying something literally, he's saying something literarily. Yep. Right. Yeah. King commies, look out, tell them, look out for my worldview. Cloudy when you sinking, got you thinking it's a whirlpool. Caesar in your pockets, you can't see who's in your pockets. But Stevie's inner visions touch your eyes and make the world move. Wifey bob her head and make her curls move. Crown jewel is character, and this ain't immortality with fairy dust. Never land, never say I never gave you hands. If I can't give them back, then you look like the...